Hi everybody, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to run Armour 3 on your Steam Deck. Now remember, I'm recording this at the beginning of January 2024, and things change quickly with Steam Deck and Steam OS. So the information I give you here may well be out of date by the time you come and watch the video and try and do it yourself. Because unfortunately, at the moment, there is no official Steam Workshop support for Armour 3 or things like DAISY either. Which means that in order to run Armour 3, really we've got to start it without mods, which means that you start it without going through the launcher. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how to actually come up with some um, and use some custom controller key bindings. So you can even, if you wanted to, um, try and use the, um, the controls with the Steam Deck or even, say, a Bluetooth or USB um, Xbox controller or something like that. But the setup I've got here is I've got a wireless keyboard and mouse and they're attached to my Steam Deck via a very simple, unofficial dock. And in fact, let me just turn this around so you can kind of see what's going on. So, you know, on the top of the Steam Deck, we have our um, USB Type-C, um, which attached to this simple dock. And then on the back of the dock, we've got HDMI output, USB-C in for HDMI output, USB-C in for power. There's the little dongle that powers my wireless keyboard and mouse. And there's another couple of USB slots there. Um, and basically, a dock is just a dongle with a cradle on it. Um, but that cradle is very useful because, in effect, it's giving you a nice, stable kickstand for your Steam Deck so you can use it with a keyboard or mouse. And I think really with games like Armour 3 or DayZ, which don't have official controller support, um, this can be quite important because I come from a console background. And to be honest, if I'm going to be using controllers, I really want the ones that are very similar to the ones that would be on the console versions of the game. Now, I know there's no console version for Armour 3, but there is for DayZ. So anyway... Let's get started. So first off, let's jump into ARM and let's look at the way that you could have custom key bindings for the controls on your Steam Deck. And to get them up, you click on this little bit here, this little controller thing. You click on that. And then you'll see this thing here that says browse community layouts for games with official, without official controller support. And then you can go to community layouts. And what you'll find here is and you can search for them as well. So you can search for like armor is... Uh, custom controller bindings that people in the community have already done, not necessarily just for the Steam Deck. They could be for Xbox controllers or PlayStation controllers or um, the Steam, Steam controller. Um, and then the idea is that what they've then done is they've mapped um, controls, whether that be thumbsticks or triggers or the, the pads or the face buttons or the D-pad, to commands in the game. How successful this is... I don't know. I I personally think if you really want to play something like Armor 3 on your Steam Deck, it's worth getting a dock. It's worth getting a wireless keyboard and mouse or just, you know, a cheap USB keyboard and mouse and connecting them via a dock and play with it that way. So the same way that, that you play with it on the um, on your on your PC. So things are familiar and you're going to have a good time now in order to launch the game um, without going into the launcher. What we need to do is we need to hit on this little manage here and then we go into properties down here and we scroll down and then we enter this line here under la um, launch options. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll copy and paste these into the description below this video so you can see what they are because I know this can be a little bit difficult to see. But basically we have dash no launcher, with the capital L on the launcher. And that means it's not going to take us into the launcher. It's not going to try to download, you know, the gigabyte worth of uh, Armour 3 mods that we have. Because the other problem, obviously, with Steam Workshop mods is for games like DayZ and Armour 3, often we'll have gigabytes worth of mods. And, you know, when your Steam Deck's only, in this case, got 512 gigabytes worth of internal memory and 512 gigabytes of a micro SD card, that's going to fill up pretty quick with Armour 3 and DayZ mods. So maybe... I don't want those mods downloading anyway. And as far as I know at the moment, that th there's not an easy way of restricting mods if you go into the launcher. The launcher will, in Armour 3 case, it will start to try to download them and put them somewhere on your on your, on your your Steam Deck. Now, there are ways of getting mods working, but I'm not going to be going into these videos because, you know, for the sake of getting Armour running so you can see it, we're going to do it this way. So you can see we've got dash no launcher, then we've got dash no splash with capital on the S of Splash, um, and uh, dash skip intro with the capital on the I for intro. Um, 
And the idea with that is that it's just, just going to load into armor. And then you'll notice the really clever bit at the end. We've got dash mod equals VN. So what this is saying is load up with the uh, Prairie Fire at C DLC as well. And again, in the description below this video, I'll put the different codes for the different C DLC. So we've got VN for Spearhead, for VN for um, Prairie Fire, GM for Global Mobilization, CLSA for CSLA, <laughs> WS for Western Sahara, and SPE for Operation Spearhead or Spare Point, the World War II one. But what we'll do in this case, what we'll do is we'll just go with, we'll get rid of that to start off with. And we'll just load up armor as it is to start off with. So if we come out of that now, and we just hit play. It's going to fire up armor without any of the uh, CDLC or without any of the mods. But you can do you can. This, what this does mean is that you can play all the single player stuff. You can play um, the um, showcases. You can do all that. You can play any of the multiplayer servers whereby um, you don't have to have mods. Um, which which is quite a lot of the uh, official ones and some community ones as well and one of the most popular cdlcs at the moment is of course prairie fire so if we go into so it's going to showcases uh, let's do the infantry one restart and this will give you an idea of the performance and to be honest in vanilla armor 3 in some of the smaller stuff i think it's 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 fine so if you're a real die hard armor 3 nut and you thought you know i really want to be able to play armor 3 on my lunch break at work um you could get a you could get a uh, steam deck get yourself a dock get yourself a wireless keyboard and mouse or a wired one um and as you'll see when we we jump in we've got armor 3 running at you know 70 odd frames a second now remember this this is the uh, this is just one of the showcases. So it's not like a massive map or anything. And there's not like hundreds of AI running around. But you know, this is Armor Three. This is running very reasonably. In fact, if we go into options, you can sort of see the settings. So we've got sort of standard, 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 high, standard, standard, standard. Undoubtedly, people who know how to optimize Armor Three could probably get it running um, really, you know, better than I have here. I haven't really done anything. Um, but I personally think this is uh, this is very playable, especially for for sort of single player stuff. The disadvantage, of course, is that Armor Three single player is very very difficult <laughs> and is um, notorious for. Uh, I think you need to really run it with with cheats to, <laughs> to get through it. And we can go third person as well. Oh, and we're dead. So, so you see, pretty cool or what? Um, and we could go into the Eden editor as well. Let's come out of here. So let's exit out of there. And let's load up one of the DLCs next. So now if we go into here, manage, and we go into properties, scroll down to the bottom, and then on the end, we've just put dash mod equals VN for uh, profile come out of here hit play this is going to take a little bit longer to load up because especially with prairie fire because i mean P prairie fire is probably not one of the best mods to uh cdlc's to load up with armor three simply because it is so <coughs> it is so big and even with really good gaming rigs prairie fire is a challenge simply because there's so much foliage there's so much going on that prairie fire is a lot less i don't like to use the the term well optimized but it, it it requires more power it simply requires more power to run um so you know it you, you, i mean you'll see when we jump in you know the frame rate um can be can be pretty slow as we're kind of wandering around and we'll, we'll just go into probably one of the single player missions so here we go so we're in profile so we could go in fact i'll tell you what we should do so we could go into single player we go into campaigns, we can do the song profile, but I tell you what, let me show you the let's go multiplayer instead. So let's go into Mike Force, because if you didn't know, Mike Force is like the most amazing um, Vietnam thing. And the one to go for is a Vietnam story 
Oh, we might not be able to get into it. Let's see if we can get in. It might be full. Maximum number of players has reached. Yeah, they're full. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we can get in now. Yeah, 40 out of 40. Uh, let's have a look. See if any of the others... Mic Force. See, I'm not sure whether these need any mods or not, actually, this one. I know a Vietnam story doesn't. Oh, well, it might be okay. Because obviously any uh, servers that require custom mods, because they've got custom weapons, or even things like someone's put in, um, uh, like the, uh, the, the gunship that um, has, has just come out, you know, they won't be able to run. Sometimes with the first time you do this, it'll ask you about um, the uh, anti-cheat. It'll ask you just to accept the terms there. Uh, but let's see if this goes through as we load into the amazing thing. If you're watching this and you're not familiar with how slow Armour 3 is, this is about how slow it is anyway. <laughs> when you're loading in. Oh, right, we're getting the music. This was normally a good sign. And here we are. We've loaded in. This is a uh, get rid of all those. All right, looks like this is a first-person-only server. And here we are in Mike Force. So let's just, let's have a quick run round just to give you an idea. So we're getting about... Between 30 and 40 frames a second. Have I got myself stuck on a fence? Let's have a quick look at the jungle. And what we would normally do is we go and find a helicopter and um, join the combat. But for the sake of this, There we go. So, you know, I mean, the frame rate is going to dip when we get into combat, when we come across lots of uh, AI and other players, you know. But <laughs> the frame rate dips on uh, official. But I think this is pretty amazing, this isn't. So this is a little Steam Deck running Linux or Linux. Um, have I got binoculars? I have. And we're playing Prairie Fire Armour 3 C DLC. So there we go. So let's come out of that. Let me just show you one more time. Let's exit out of that. So the thing to remember is, at the moment, there's no official workshop support for um, Armour 3 or Daisy workshop mods. So what you do is you want to go into the Manage, you want to go into Properties, you want to scroll down and you want to make sure that in the launch options you have dash no launcher with capital L on the launcher. And that will skip the launcher. It will stop Armour 3 trying to download all your mods. Um, and then if you want to have any of the CDLC as well, you do dash mod equals and then the code for the CDLC. And again, in the description below this video, I'll put all the different codes for the ones that are currently available. So there we go. Hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully this will encourage you to have a go with Armour 3 on your Steam Deck if you own it. Again, I, I wouldn't say buy a Steam Deck to play Armour 3. Say you're a console player and you think, oh, I really want to play Armour 3. I don't think this is the way to do it because you're not getting the full experience with all the mods and everything like this. But if you're an Armour 3 fan already and you play it already and you fancy, you know, having a, a kind of a bit of a mobile option and, you know, with those key mappings that you can apply to the controls, it is doable. You know, it can, it can be doable. But even if you fancy just having the ability at work to be able to go in... I mean, the thing to remember is with a dock as well like this, you can unplug your monitor at work and plug it into this and you could have it running on the, on the monitor, which is fantastic. Anyway, hopefully you find this video useful. If you have, you know, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.